and shares of Monsanto, the world's largest seed company, grew about 1%. Monsanto, a leading developer of genetically engineered corn, soybeans and other crops, said it was raising its full-year profit expectations after posting a better-than-expected second quarter, driven largely by strength in its global corn business. Net income rose 22% to $1.48 billion. Meanwhile, a policy on genetically modified food called the Monsanto Act is stirring some controversy. Phil has the latest on that. Phil. Yeah, Michelle, it's a small provision in the U.S. funding law that's causing the big uproar after passing through Congress and being signed into law by President Obama without the full committee review. The Farmers Assurance provision is being also doubled as the Monsanto Protection Act for quietly allowing biotech companies like Monsanto to plant and sell genetically modified crops while avoiding, avoiding legal challenges if those products are later deemed hazardous. Now, the wording of the provision has angered food safety groups who claim Congress is favoring big businesses by allowing them to circumvent the law. Over a quarter million have signed on to the petition by Food Democracy Now!, which is opposing the law. Agriculture firms who support the law, including the American Soybean Association, say the provision addresses a costly vulnerable ability in the regulatory process for biotechnology that is discouraging innovation in agriculture and unnecessary putting farmers at financial risk. Monsanto is the world's largest seed company, is on track to sell a record amount of corn this year. U.S. farmers getting ready to sow their biggest crop in nearly 77 years. For more on this controversy, Wayne Parrott, professor of the Department of Crop and Soil Sciences, College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, University of Georgia, and Zach Caldvier, Assistant Media Director at the Organic Consumers Organization, joining me live from Oakland. Um, let me start with you. Th this provision, how, how did we get here? How did that even get into the bill? Well, uh, you know, this is a typical of the kind of tactics that Monsanto has used uh, for decades, uh, really. They tried to do the same thing last year with the rider, uh, and they used uh, a congressman, Jack Kingston, who was the legislator of the year, uh, according to uh, biotechnology uh, lobbyists. Uh, so it failed that time, and they tried to sneak it in again. Uh, and basically, they don't want an honest debate about this because as you can see, uh, the people do not want to grant uh, corporations like Monsanto, which already have overwhelming power and monopolization over our food system. They have a revolving door relationship with the FDA. So they went to one of their uh, big boosters in the Senate, Roy Blunt, uh, who offered this amendment. Somehow he was able to sneak it in to uh, a large a larger bill, which is basically was hurried through because the government was going to shut down. Z so Zach, it give, let, yeah. let, let, me, let me get Wayne in on this conversation as well. So you, you heard what Zach had to say. It doesn't sound too crazy. It sounds like that's kind of how Washington works. So what's wrong with that? Well, good evening and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I think what's wrong with that is that people really need to read the provision uh, in section, uh, what, 735? and really see what it says. And what it says is that if the regulatory agencies have said that a new biotech crop is safe, and that if a judge is going to second guess them, then the judge cannot order farmers to pull up their crops while they argue about it. So it really protects the interests of farmers uh, more than anybody else. Zach, let me ask you, uh, let's take this perhaps a step backwards. Yeah. Is America, and for that matter, the rest of the world, are we watching crops and food safety enough? Well, the rest of the world is doing a far better job than America. Uh, you know, 62 other countries uh, in the world now, we're one of only two industrialized countries left, uh, require labeling of genetically engineered foods. Uh, and in the United States, uh, we not only do not label genetically engineered foods, but essentially our FDA uh, allows, uh, does not require any safety studies. And the problem with this Monsanto rider is, is it would require uh, the agriculture secretary to give permits uh, to farmers that to keep growing a crop that a court 
or even the USDA has deemed that dangerous and that needs to go back, that has not, uh, has not followed or passed environmental standards, so needs to go back uh, and have those done before it should be grown. G gentlemen, so isn't, the, yeah. isn't the bigger question whether or not genetically modified crops are 100% safe? And Professor, I, I'll hand this to you, but can you say with assurance to all of our audience that genetically modified crops, whether no matter which country they're made in, they're safe? I can uh, assure you that they're every bit as safe as the rest of the food you eat. Um, I actually happen to be in Washington because I've been meeting with regulators all afternoon. And uh, the, the, the uh, section uh, 735 does not say that you know, unapproved crops can be ordered. It, so re you really re need to read that before Wait, you... You, uh, you believe the crops are safe, but how do the regulators... I want to know, how do the regulators know that, the, that the everything is safe? What, do, what tools there, do they there's, have? There's uh, three agencies, and uh, nothing is voluntary. Uh, you know, there's a confusion in the language because it says that there's voluntary consultation for whole foods, but that's for the food itself. But if you engineer it and put something in it, what you put in it is not voluntary. That's a mandatory consultation. Do you worry at all about this? No, I don't. Uh, so it, right now, the latest study is that there's about $34 million worth of safety tests that are done in any product before it gets to the market. Not only that, because we're in a global market, uh, you know, there's different parts of the world that like to run their own tests. There's different tests, there's different regulations. There's Zach, different tests. Let me get to Zach. I'll give you the last word here. What's wrong with this, and I hate to say this, but what is the worst case scenario in this entire bill? Well, I, I mean, I think the, the issue is, is so much bigger than this bill. Uh, the, 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 the real question is uh, the control and the power and the monopolization of our food supply and our seeds, and then a regulatory system that not only adequately safety test these. In fact, they take the tests of companies like Monsanto and, and then take them as uh, truth, whereas other countries do not. And so basically in America, the, the consumer is the test subject of an experiment. And it's not about just the safety of genetic engineering foods. It's the herbicides and the toxic herbicides that are sprayed on them by companies like Monsanto, which independent studies around the world are showing there are definitely health effects on the animals that are being tested on them. They just don't show up in the studies that are done by Monsanto that the FDA accepts. And the FDA, of course, is filled with former Monsanto employees. Zach Caldvere, Wayne Parrott, thank you very much for helping us You're better understand welcome. this situation. You guys don't agree, and that's okay. We're going to talk more about this later. Thank you very much. All right, thank